your first treatment was uh, was cladribine, and then you had the uh, penistatin, and then the uh, is, is that right? When I first well, I know the the, the chemo by the name of two CDA. Right. Um, that was my first treatment, and then, in fact, what had happened, I, I had to have several treatments over the course of that next ten years or so. It seemed like every two two and a half years, I would have to get another treatment of 2-CDA. Mm -hmm. I had three treatments, if I can remember correctly, it was three with 2-CDA, and the last one, I had a fourth treatment, but that was married up with another uh, medicine called Rituxin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right. That, I did not take Rituxin very well, so. Right. But I got into a pattern where every two years, I had had to have treatment. And at when I first, my first discussion with the hematologist, they said, oh, we have this uh, treatment that's 90 something percent effective of getting rid of hairy cell in the first treatment. Well, I was disappointed having to go through treatment with 2CDA multiple times over the next 10 years or so. Right. So, uh so the, the cladribine, uh, the CDA, uh, that uh, patients get for the very first time is highly effective. And as you say, 90% complete remission, um, varies a little bit, uh, 75, 85%, up to 95% in different studies. Um, and, but the question is, how long does it last? And uh, uh, what we know uh, from studies is that uh, it can take up to 15, 16 years for half of the patients to relapse. Uh, and so to relapse within a couple years is, uh, is early. Uh, and so uh, now, now one of the things that's really important is to not get retreated too early. Uh, you want to really have, uh, the, have a need for treatment before you get more chemotherapy. Uh, and so we recommend that patients uh, follow this uh, one, 10, and 100 rule. In other words, uh, the uh, neutrophils less than one, or the hemoglobin less than 10, or the platelet count less than 100, one of those three. There are some other criteria if the spleen's very painful, if the patient's getting infections, but those are the main criteria. And a lot of people we feel get retreated uh, with chemotherapy too early. Um, uh, with uh, uh, um, before they really need treatment, um, but uh, but it sounds like you did need treatment. Um, yes, during that ten year period, I was in the hospital four to five times with um, pneumonia, with uh, my my white cell count below at 0.5 or below. Um, it it caused me to avoid crowds. I missed several family events because I was worried about getting pneumonia in that 10-year ten ten period. So that's, that turned me into a germ, a germ phobe. So after getting uh, several of these courses of chemotherapy, I think maybe uh, three, uh, then uh, you, uh, you, uh, you took a combination of the, of the uh, penistatin, which is uh, similar to cladribine. Uh, but it was combined with rituximab, mm -hmm. uh, which is an antibody that works by a different mechanism. How was that like to take? What was the, what was the kind of side effects that you had with the rituximab? The, um, on the very first treatment with retux, uh, rituxin, I became allergic. My, my, I was itching all over. My fingers were itching. My neck was itching. And... I began to, my sight, I began to get my vision started to close down on me. And mm. what had happened is the, the doctor's office put me in an ambulance and sent me to the emergency room. My, my blood pressure dropped to 60 over 40. And so they sent me over to the emergency room. They treated me with uh, fluids and I think it was Benadryl. And that that's what happened the first time. The second time, I did end up with some red welts and things on, on my body. 
Um, but I, I did not take rituxan very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a, uh, this is a very common uh, um, experience that, that patients have with, with rituximab, which is a very effective and uh, very important antibody. It's really a major advance in not only hairy cell leukemia, but in, in uh, oncology and, hemat and hematology in general uh, over the past uh, couple decades. But uh, it does cause um, what we call infusion reactions. And those infusion reactions can look like allergies, uh, the welts, uh, the low blood pressure, even high blood pressure. Uh, and you have to be careful. Uh, uh, I know of a patient who uh, had uh, a heart uh, condition that was exacerbated. In other words, there was a, a decrease in his heart function. That really, uh, in other words, is like a heart attack. Um, and uh, fortunately, after a couple days, the heart function improved and came back to normal. Uh, but uh, you have to be very careful when you give rituximab. Uh, we um, uh, have given hundreds of courses of rituximab. Uh, we give eight weekly doses, and we often find that the first couple doses are, um, are more difficult to give than the subsequent courses. Um, you have to give steroids to prevent uh, side effects. Um, but in properly given, uh, patients uh, can give it, can receive it safely. And the other thing is that uh, many patients stop getting rituximab because uh, they feel that they're allergic to it, their doctors really are not comfortable giving it. And they're really, uh, over the last 10 years, um, we've found that there's no patient that we haven't been able to give rituximab to, um, even if they are truly allergic to it, and we've had uh, several patients that are, um, we just have to uh, give it in a way that is called desensitization, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, you can get it safely that way. Um, it's more complicated, it has to be given uh, over a whole day period of time, it has to be given in an intensive care unit, uh, but it's very safe um, uh, to do it that way. Uh, so, uh, but I'm glad that you were able to get through the rituximab after the first couple doses being a little rocky.